So as you have worked with boards, what do you see are some of the biggest challenges that boards face? Yeah, so I would say definitely one of the most pressing ones at the moment is is the whole digital hype. Most organizations, if not all of them, are thinking digital transformation, if not like severely already involved in uh, a digital transformation. And so boards are really trying to catch up and think about what does that actually mean for our role and for the board oversight. And so one of the ways that boards have dealt with it is by recruiting a member that is sort of like a digital board member. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly one way to go about it. However, I think increasingly in organizations as well as on boards, we are starting to realize that digital is needs to be a shared overarching responsibility. And just like in organizations, I think we're now moving away from like having a a small sort of focused team that's going to take our organization to the next level. And we're understanding that actually everyone needs to be aware at least of digital, if not actively advocating and contributing to digital transformation. The same applies to boards. Boards are starting to realize that Perhaps one single expert is not a way to go about this. Perhaps a better way to go about this is making sure that all board members have enough knowledge so that they can execute that sort of strategic oversight. And perhaps in addition to that, having one person who is really like a deep technical expert. I would say that's definitely one of the most pressing challenges currently, which has led to an interesting interesting evolution recently that we're seeing more and more board members that are younger joining boards because boards need people from a sort of tax and startup space. Well, that space is typically a very young space. And so that has led to a, a different trend, which is more like, okay, having a more age diversity on boards because bringing on a digital board member typically means bringing a younger board member, certainly certainly younger than the current average, which is 60 plus now in the U.S. So you talk a lot about um, the future of the board. Part of that you see as a diversity and age, what other changes do you think are going to be occurring for the board of the future to be really effective? Yeah, so I think it's interesting because in the sort of underlying organizations, we're seeing a lot of movement. There is definitely a strong push for agility and organizations are understanding that they need to adjust their processes and their culture in order to be able to keep up with the market. And the pace of change in the market is as high as it has ever been. And it's most probably not going to slow down. So there is like a massive disruption in many industries and companies are catching up. They're realizing that rigid org structures do not work anymore. And having a team of highly sort of technical experts doesn't necessarily work anymore because we need people to do this today and that tomorrow. And we need people who are really quick learners and very, very agile. So I would say the same needs to be to a certain level replicated on boards. However, boards are lagging behind a little bit. They're not necessarily as quick to adopt their practices and processes, which rightly so, they're constrained. I mean, boards are highly regulated bodies and there's a lot of sort of legal and regulatory requirements that need to be honored. But I would say in order for boards to be fit for future, they really need to think about like, what does agility mean in the boardroom? What does that mean in terms of how we are setting up our agenda? What does it mean in terms of the frequency of meetings? Are quarterly meetings really good enough anymore to keep up with the pace of change? Do we need to have touch points in between? And if so, how does that work? How are we exchanging information in a more agile way? Obviously, there is the whole cybersecurity that needs to be considered as well how we go about information exchange but but I think there's a lot that boards need to start thinking about to make sure they're really continuing to be that strategic partner for the underlying organizations and just so our audience knows you're in the process of writing a book on the subject and you anticipate it will be finished um, I'm hoping early fall. Yeah. Early fall. Okay. Well, everybody stay tuned. We will actually send out information when to our audience when Absolutely. your book is released so people can know. Absolutely. 
So uh, the boardroom is changing, digital is changing, how we communicate is going to change. And, you know, just like we talk now on Zoom and other places like that, um, do you see those kinds of changes also coming into that interaction interface between boards and executive teams? And um, how so? I think it will inevitably have to happen. I would say we're seeing a little bit of it already, but I think we will see it increasingly going forward because... The, the way I see the future is we will need increased frequency of touch points between the boards and the executive teams just because of the pace of change. And if you take into account how busy the board members are as well as the executive teams, well, physical touch points just won't be possible anymore. So in order to really support that agility, we will need to become much more agile in, in our modalities of communicating on board level as well. And we're seeing it in the sort of underneath, in the underlying organizations. We're all sort of embracing video and audio and all of that. And, and boards, I would say, are slowly catching up, but will definitely catch up in the future. 